Welcome back to Cut It With A Hammer. Today is, I'm going to do part two of my, in my series of A Road to a Slider. And today I'm going to talk about uh, all the choices or basically the lack thereof choices uh, when it came to uh, buying a table saw and what I was looking for and what I had decided to purchase. The cabinet saws that are available in North America pretty much have not changed much since Delta came out with their Unisaw in about 1939. Here's a photo of a restored 1947-ish one, I believe. The top is typically 27 inches deep of somewhat varying but standard widths. And there are usually one or two miter channels that are three quarters of an inch wide and three eighths of an inch deep. There are 13 to 15 inches of table space in front of the blade, depending on how high you have your blade set. And there's about four to six inches beyond the blade which isn't very much. You can use an outfeed roller as pictured here, but this has to be perpendicular to the direction of travel of the piece of wood. Otherwise it tends to push the wood to one side or the other, depending on how the angle is on the roller. You can also use this ball bearing style, but that doesn't really work for uh, smaller pieces. Some people use an outfeed table, either a open style like this one or a more of a traditional table like this one. Or they put their workbench behind the table saw and they can use that as part of an outfeed table, which is fine as long as you don't have anything on the table. Some of the better known names in cabinet saws would be Powerbatic, Grizzly, Laguna, Jet, Saw Stop, Bailey, Delta, and Craftsman. And I'm sure there's others that I've probably forgotten, and I'm sure that was your favorite, so I apologize for that. So this chart came off a Taiwanese manufacturing company website. And as you can see, a lot of those names I just mentioned show up on this list. So they all source the same basic materials or pieces from this company. Differences are going to be in minor features, accessories like saw stop heads there, safety features, color paint, perhaps, uh, maybe a different cabinet. But basically, depending on how much you're paying for it, you're gonna get a nicer saw, regardless of which company you go with. They're all pretty much gonna come out of the same factory, so there's not a lot of differentiation here. So when I started shopping around for a cabinet saw, I like Laguna tools. Why? It's hard to say. I mean, a lot of their equipment also comes out of the same Taiwan factory that uh, a lot of the other ones come out of, but uh, I don't know. I just like the company overall for some reason. But uh, I was trying to find something that was more of a direct replacement of what I currently have. And I was intrigued like most people are about the safety features on the saw stop. And so after some thinking and him and Han, I decided I would go with the saw stop. And I tricked it out pretty much as you see here with the router table extension. Um, what's not shown here is the dust collection box for the router or the lift for the router. Um, but pretty much this is the saw I was looking at getting. And I pretty much had decided when uh, my tax refund came around that this would be the saw I would get. So thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or anything, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment below. I'll probably get around to answering it pretty quick. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.